Hi guys, this is Zuleika from Edureka. The evolution of AI has changed the entire 21st century. In terms of technology, AI has stolen the spotlight and its advancements are quicker than we predicted. With such an exponential growth in AI, machine learning is becoming the most trending field of the 21st century. It is starting to redefine the way we live and it's time we understood what it is and why it matters. In this session, we'll be discussing the different types of machine learning and we'll compare them to each other. So let me run you through today's agenda. We're going to begin this session with an introduction to machine learning. Next, we'll discuss the types of machine learning. After that, we'll compare supervised, unsupervised and reinforcement learning based on a few key parameters. We'll finally end the session by discussing a few example problems that can be solved using supervised, unsupervised and reinforcement learning algorithms. So without any further delay, let's get started. So guys, machine learning is the science of getting computers to act by feeding them data and letting them learn a few tricks on their own without being explicitly programmed. Now this sounds awfully a lot like a human child. So let's consider a small scenario to understand machine learning. Now as a child, if you had to distinguish between fruits such as cherries, apples and oranges, you wouldn't even know where to start because you're not familiar with how the fruits look. Now as we grow up, we collect more information and start developing the capability to distinguish between various fruits. The only reason why we are able to make this distinction is because we observed our surroundings, we gathered more data and we learned from our past experiences. It's because our brain is capable enough to think and make decisions since we have been feeding it a lot of data. And this is exactly how machine learning works. It involves continuously feeding data to a machine so that it can interpret this data understand the useful insights, detect patterns and identify key features to solve problems. This is very similar to how our brain works. Now let's move ahead and take a look at the different types of machine learning. So first of all, we have supervised learning. Now guys, supervised means to oversee or direct a certain activity and make sure it's done correctly. In this type of learning, the machine learns under guidance. So at school, our teachers guided us and taught us. Similarly, in supervised learning, machines learn by feeding them labeled data and explicitly telling them, hey, this is the input and this is exactly how the output must look. OK, so the teacher in this case is a training data. Next, we have unsupervised learning. Unsupervised means to act without anyone's supervision or without anybody's direction. Now here the data is not labeled. There is no guide and the machine has to figure out the data set given and it has to find hidden patterns in order to make predictions about the output. An example of unsupervised learning is an adult like you and me. We don't need a guide to help us with our daily activities. We can figure things out on our own without any supervision. Finally, we have reinforcement learning. Now guys, reinforcement means to establish or encourage a pattern of behavior. Let's say that you were dropped off at an isolated island. What would you do? Now, initially you'd panic and you'd be unsure of what to do, where to get food from, how to live and so on. But after a while, you will have to adapt. You must learn how to live in the island, adapt to the changing climates, learn what to eat and what not to eat. So here you're basically following the hit and trial concept because you're new to the surrounding and the only way to learn is experience and then learn from your experience. This is what reinforcement learning is. It is a learning method wherein an agent, which is basically you stuck on the island, interacts with its environment, which is the island, by producing actions and discovers errors or rewards. And once the agent gets trained, it gets ready to predict the new data presented to it. Now let's move ahead and look at the differences between supervised, unsupervised and reinforcement learning. So let's begin by looking at their definitions. Now, like I mentioned earlier, supervised learning is a type of machine learning wherein we teach the machine using labeled data. So your input and your output is labeled. Next, we have unsupervised learning. Over here, the data provided to the machine is not labeled and the machine has to learn without any supervision. So that's why it should discover hidden patterns and trends in the data. Finally, we have reinforcement learning. Now the basic concept behind reinforcement learning is that there is an agent. Now this agent is put in an unknown environment. So the agent has to explore the environment by taking actions 
and transitioning from one state to the other so that he can get maximum rewards. Now the next parameter to consider is the type of problems that are solved using supervised, unsupervised and reinforcement learning. So under supervised learning, we have two main categories of problems. We have regression problems and we have classification problems. Now guys, there's an important difference between classification and regression. Basically, classification is about predicting a label or a class, whereas regression is about predicting a continuous quantity. Now let's say that you have to classify your emails into two different groups. So here basically we'll be labeling our emails as spam and non spam mails. For this kind of problem where we have to assign our input data into different classes, we make use of classification algorithms. On the other hand, regression is used to predict a continuous quantity. Now a continuous variable is a variable that has infinite number of possibilities. For example, a person's weight. So someone could weigh 180 pounds or they could weigh 180.10 pounds or 180.110 pounds. Now the number of possibilities for weight are limitless and this is exactly what a continuous variable is. So regression is a predictive analysis used to predict continuous variables. Here you don't have to label data into different classes. Instead you have to predict a final outcome like let's say that you want to predict the price of a stock over a period of time. For such problems, you can make use of regression algorithms. Coming to unsupervised learning, this type of learning can be used to solve association problems and clustering problems. Association problems basically involve discovering patterns in data, finding co-occurrences and so on. A classic example of association rule mining is a relationship between bread and jam. So people who tend to buy bread also tend to buy jam. Over here, it's all about finding associations between items that frequently co-occur or items that are similar to each other. Apart from association problems, unsupervised learning also deals with clustering and anomaly detection problems. Clustering is used for cases that involve targeted marketing, wherein you are given a list of customers and some information about them. And what you have to do is you have to cluster these customers based on their similarity. Now guys, digital adverts use a clustering technique to cluster potential buyers into different categories based on their interests and their intent. Anomaly detection on the other hand is used for tracking unusual activities. An example of this is credit card fraud, wherein various unsupervised algorithms are used to detect suspicious activities. Then there is reinforcement learning. Now this type of learning is comparatively different. In reinforcement learning, the key difference is that the input itself depends on the actions we take. For example, in robotics, we might start in a situation where the robot does not know anything about the surrounding it is in. So after it performs certain actions, it finds out more about the world. But the world it sees depends on whether it chooses to move right or whether it chooses to move forward or backward. In this case, the robot is known as the agent and its surrounding is the environment. So for each action it takes, it can receive a reward or it might receive a punishment. Now the next parameter is the type of data used to train a machine. When it comes to supervised learning, it's quite clear and simple. The machine will be provided with a label set of input and output data in the training phase itself. So basically you feed the output of your algorithm into the system. This means that in supervised learning, the machine already knows the output of the algorithm before it starts working on it. Now an example is classifying a data set into either cats or dogs, right? So if the algorithm is fed an image of a cat, the image is labeled as a cat, similarly for a dog. So guys, this is how the model is taught. It's told that this is a cat by labeling it. After the algorithm is taught, it is then tested using a new data set. But a point to remember here is that in the training phase for a supervised learning algorithm, the data is labeled. All right, the input is also labeled and the output is also labeled. In unsupervised learning, the machine is only given the input data. So here we don't tell the system where to go. The system has to understand itself from the input data that we give to it. So it does this by finding patterns in the data. So if we try to classify images into cats and dogs, in unsupervised learning, the machine will be fed images of cats and dogs and at the end it will form two groups, one containing cats and the other containing dogs. Now the only difference here is that it won't add labels to the output. 
Okay, it will just understand how cats look and cluster them into one group and similarly for dogs coming to reinforcement learning. There is no predefined data. The input depends on the actions taken by the agent. Now these actions are then recorded in the form of matrices so that it can serve as a memory to the agent. So basically as the agent explores the environment, it will collect data which will then be used to get the output. So guys in reinforcement learning, there is no predefined data set given to the machine. The agent does all the work from scratch. The next parameter to consider is training in supervised learning. The training phase is well defined and very explicit. The machine is fed training data where both the input and output is labeled and the only thing the algorithm has to do is map the input to the output. So the training data acts like a teacher or a guide over here. Now once the algorithm is well trained, it is tested using the new data. When it comes to unsupervised learning, the training phase is vague because the machine is only given the input and it has to figure out the output on its own. So there's no supervisor here or there's no mentor over here. In reinforcement learning, there is no predefined data and the whole reinforcement learning process itself is a training and testing phase. Since there is no predefined data given to the machine, it has to learn everything on its own and it starts by exploring and collecting data. The next parameter we're going to discuss is the aim of each of these machine learning types. The main aim or the end goal of a supervised learning algorithm is to forecast an outcome. Now, obviously, that is the basic aim of all these machine learning types, but the whole supervised learning process is built in such a way that it can directly give you a predicted outcome because supervised learning algorithms have a very well defined training phase. Unsupervised learning is all about discovering patterns and extracting useful insights. Now, since the algorithm is only fed the input, it has to find a way to get to the output by finding trends and associations in the data. Coming to reinforcement learning, the agent here is a lot like a human child. Just like how a baby is clueless about the world. Initially, the agent also has no idea about its environment. But as it explores the environment, it starts learning. It learns from the mistakes it makes and it basically learns from its experience. Now let's look at the approach followed when it comes to supervised learning. It's quite simple. Like I mentioned earlier, all that the algorithm has to do is map the known input to the known output. In unsupervised learning, the algorithm has to find patterns in data, trends in data and keep exploring the data until it reaches the output. The approach followed by reinforcement learning is a trial and error method. The trial and error method best explains reinforcement learning because the agent has to try out all possible actions to learn about its environment and to get maximum rewards. The next parameter is feedback. Now in supervised learning, there is a direct feedback mechanism since the machine is trained with labeled input and output for unsupervised learning. There is no feedback mechanism because the machine is unaware of the output during the training phase. Now in reinforcement learning, the feedback is in the form of rewards or punishments from the environment. So when an agent takes a suitable action, it will get a corresponding reward for that action. But if the action is wrong, then it gets a punishment. So rewards and punishments can be thought with respect to a game. Now in a game, when you win a state, you get extra coins. But when you fail, you have to go back to the same state and try again. Now let's look at some of the popular algorithms. Supervised learning has algorithms like linear regression, which is mainly used for regression problems. It also has algorithms like support vector machines, decision trees and so on. And these can also be used for classification problems. Coming to unsupervised learning, we have algorithms like k-means, c-means, for clustering analysis and algorithms like a priori and association rule mining to deal with association problems. Now reinforcement learning is just being explored recently. A few algorithms include Q learning and the state action reward state action algorithm. Next up we have applications. So guys supervised learning is widely used in the business sector for forecasting risks, risk analysis, predicting sales, profit and so on. Coming to unsupervised learning. So guys, the recommendations you see when you shop online, like for example, if you buy a book on Amazon, right? You get a list of recommendations. Now these are all done by unsupervised learning algorithms. Other applications include anomaly detection, credit card fraud detection and so on. Now reinforcement learning is used in self-driving cars, 
in building games and all of that. One famous example is the AlphaGo game. I'm sure all of you have heard of that. So guys, those were the major differences between supervised, unsupervised and reinforcement learning. So now let me give you a few examples of problems that can be solved using supervised, unsupervised and reinforcement learning algorithms. All right, so our first use case is to study a bank credit data set and make a decision about whether to approve the loan of an applicant based on his profile. So here we're going to be given a bank credit data set. Now the information that you see over here is for each of the customers. So every customer's account balance, purpose, credit amount, value, savings, everything is given in the data set. And you have to predict whether you can approve the loan of an applicant based on his bank account balance, based on his purpose, his credit amount and his savings. So for this problem, you can make use of the supervised learning algorithm known as KNN algorithm or K nearest neighbor algorithm. Now let's look at our next use case. Now here we have to establish a mathematical equation for distance as a function of speed. So basically over here you're going to predict the distance that a car can travel based on its speed. So guys the best algorithm to use for such a problem is the linear regression algorithm. So the linear regression algorithm is basically used to predict continuous quantities. And in this case we have to predict the distance which is a continuous quantity. And like I mentioned earlier, a linear regression is a type of supervised learning algorithm. Okay, moving on to our next use case. Now the problem here is to cluster a set of movies as either good or average based on their social media outreach. All right, now if you read the problem statement properly, you can see the word cluster. All right, this clearly means that this is a clustering problem and clustering problems fall under unsupervised learning. So here we're going to make use of a algorithm known as K means algorithm to form two clusters. Okay, one cluster is going to contain popular movies and the other is going to contain non popular movies based on their likes on social media. Now moving ahead, our next problem statement is to perform market basket analysis by finding association between items bought at the grocery store. Again, over here you can see the keyword association. This means that this is an association problem. Now association problems fall under the unsupervised learning algorithms and here we can make use of the a priori algorithm to do this. So here what you have to do is basically you have to try and find association between different items. So if a person bought bread and butter together, it means that there is an association between these two items. So in this problem, you're just going to find the association between different items and you're going to make use of the unsupervised learning algorithm called the a priori algorithm. So guys, this is the last use case and over here the problem statement says that you're going to place an agent in any one of the rooms and basically the rooms are represented as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and the goal here is to reach the outside of the building. Now this is clearly a reinforcement learning problem. All right, to solve this you can make use of the Q learning algorithm and your end goal is to reach room number 5. So guys here you can see that there is no data set because the data set is going to be developed by the agent itself. So guys over here the agent is responsible for collecting the data. All right he's going to explore the environment collect useful information and then he's going to use this information to get to room number five. So guys that was it for our use cases and with this we come to the end of today's video. I hope all of you enjoyed it. If you have any doubts or any queries regarding the session please leave them in the comment section and we'll get back to you at the earliest. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.